How's it going, guys? This is Cameron. Hope you guys are doing well, that you're enjoying the extended Labor Day weekend. Normally, I don't like to cut these vlog updates. It's not my style. I like to write. I like to pod in tandem with the post. But just in light of all that God's been doing in my heart in recent weeks, I just wanted to take some time to capture these thoughts and present them to you in this way. Before I continue, let me just say from the bottom of my heart, Endless is thank you so much for your kind words, your generosity, your benevolence in recent weeks to those who have engaged us through social media, leaving comments and being faithful to pray through those mediums and those who have left audio texts, those who have contributed financially, those who, who have contributed meals, we are grateful. So please know that. The main reason why I wanted to cut this video was to share some insights and revelations that have started to emerge from this turbulent period. And part of this is inspired by a lot of questions. I've, I've received a lot of cues from people at work, at church, all points in between. Like, how am I keeping it together through all this? You know, people are surprised that I'm at work. People are surprised that I'm able to at least come across as composed. And I take no credit. It's I certainly want humility to be that initial grid through how I communicate. So please know that there's no pride here that I cite, I give God all the glory and credit in what he's been doing lately. But still, like, in the spirit of unlocking some of these secrets and sharing them with you, because we all are going to hit a point where we go into crisis mode. I'm in that right now still. I don't know how long Jubilee has it. I'm believing that she's going to make it through. She's been doing great this week. But still, there's that uncertainty. There's that temptation, the weight of the temptation to give in to worry and fear. And I've been in this process, this rhythm of deflecting that and wanted to help you guys do the same. I was talking with my dad over coffee last week. And one secret that has really been working for me is not just trying in my strength to eradicate the worry, but just punting it, deferring it to the point that the next time it be, makes sense to worry, it's obsolete. And that's really been working for me. We know, we know that Matthew 6 verse about don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will take care of itself. And that implies a putting and a deference. But practically speaking, at the surface, when we're going through these situations, you know, it could be so overwhelming. And I certainly felt that. So my thought process when it comes to, again, the temptation to give in to worry and anxiety is I am not going to try and solve it. I'm going to try and I'm, I'm not going to try at all. Actually, I'm going to punt it. I'm going to defer it out of that posture of holy dependence. And, you know, it, it makes sense in my flesh. It makes sense to go in a spiral, go in a tailspin. It's like, what is happening? Why is it happening? Well, many of us watching this were why people it's like, God, why? Please tell me why. And just punting the worry as I punt the entitlement to know why this is happening. And the more you do that, quoting scripture, the process, you know, seeing the scripture, seeing the prayer throughout the chaos, you begin to sense this holy momentum begin to snowball. We talk about snowballs in negative terms, but there are certain snowballs that are positive and really helpful. And I've been using the term holy momentum in conversations with people. The more we rely on him, the more that <laughs> reliance just feels so good. It's like, God, I cannot do this without you. I am trusting you the whole way through this process. Uh, I want to know the purpose of this, but in a sense, the challenge and the difficulties of the present, that in many ways is the current purpose of this new life that you've entrusted into my care, into Alyssa's care. Earlier this year, when uh, around March or so, when Liz and I first discovered that we were pregnant, you know, we weren't trying to get pregnant. This was a surprise baby uh, in every sense of the word. And we, you know, I wrestled. I spent weeks in April mainly just wrestling with God, like the purpose, the why, with why did we have to have another? And thank, thank you, God. By the way, this is an amazing blessing. But I was kind of torn. I was conflicted. I felt almost irresponsible. 
And I wrestled with the purpose for this life. And now you fast forward to now and I'm wrestling in a different way, but I'm wrestling in a wholesome way, in a holy way, if that makes sense, where I've learned the last four or five months what it's like to just, again, punt the whys away. Just, I want to know why, and it's okay that I want to know why, but I am content in not knowing. I am content in knowing that I'm loved by God and that there's purpose in this life and there's purpose in what I'm going through and the purpose for Jubilee's existence right now is the challenge. You cannot separate the two, the purpose and the challenge. They are mutually exclusive and it's producing this testimony unfolding. It's, you know, I, I'm looking in, <laughs> I, I'm believing that God is not only going to sustain this life in the present, but that there's going to be radical testimony through Jubilee when she's older, her survival story being part of her salvation story. So I uh, wanted to share that. And then just going back a lot of us are aware of Second Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. For the sake of Christ, I am content with weakness, insults, hardship. That's actually verse 10. Verse 9, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weakness, hardships, calamities, etc. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So marrying those two verses back to back, my grace is sufficient for you. A lot of times we, we take that bite and we can run with it out of context. But at times, power is made perfect in weakness. Listen, I have been super weak, <laughs> super weak as of late, not just physically, but emotionally. We are drained. And I, I've told people, you know, I don't have the margin anymore to, I don't have the bandwidth, I don't have the energy or the time to devote myself to worry and anxiety. It makes it easier to punt away to God's grace, I'm excited about that. Like, I don't have the margin for it. So it doesn't make sense to give into that, but I don't have margin for it. It's embracing the weakness, it's helped me so tremendously to embrace what I can't control. It's like, okay, well, all I have to do, all that's within me is to trust God through this and to delight, not just trust blindly, but to delight. That's the thing. We could know we're sufficient or that His grace is sufficient. We can know that intellectually, but it's not until we start delighting in it as we're going through suffering, you know, we, we feel like we're spinning out of control on the road. What do they tell you to do? You turn into the turn. Um, you you get that steering wheel and you, you go into, even though it feels unnatural, you steer it into the turn. You don't resist it. And that's what I've been doing in my life for the last two, three weeks. It's like, you know, there, there was a point, I'll never forget it. It was Tuesday, August 10th, a week after I realized, okay, this is going to be maybe rough sledding after all. And we actually, listen, I had come out of an, a second appointment on August 10th. We realized we needed to go to the doctor every week up until baby's born. This was before Liz was hospitalized on the 13th. And I remember we got some neutral news. We were trying to figure out, okay, this is going to be a new rhythm. This is how this is going to impact the family life moving forward. And um, we pick up the kids from my mom's and the car breaks down. It was a a hose, a, a heater hose. Um, it wasn't a radiator issue, but it was something similar. Um, a hose had snapped off and we had gone like zero to hot in like 30 seconds. And <laughs> we, I was just sitting there in the car. It was a super hot day. I was baking. I'm just like, okay, this is going to be one of those months, isn't it? Just felt the bullseye on the back. List was like, can, nothing can go right right now. And I'm just like, I was tempted at that point to be like, okay, what is going on? Why is the bullseye on my back? Why do I sense this oppression all of a sudden? And I made a choice that day on Tuesday, August 10th. Like, you know what? I'm not going to fight it. I'm going to, in a way, receive it. I'm going to acknowledge. I'm not going to try and combat this target on our backs and just the chaos that's brewing here. I'm almost going to take it as like, okay, you know, this is a chance to step up. This is a chance to enter into a new level of spiritual warfare and to practice my faith. The upbringing, I've been blessed to have my, you know, the family that I've grown up with, the church life, uh, everything that's been instilled into me ever since I was a young boy, you, it grooms you for times like this. It prepares you for it. So when you hit them, don't be discouraged, be encouraged. Like I get to practice all of this that I've learned over the years. It's difficult. Yes, don't deny the emotions. Like, yes, this sucks. What's happening 
not ideal, but you can also see how God is using that as opportunity to nurture and grow that faith into another level. And that's just been, you know, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. In a nutshell, the last three, four weeks applied, it's given me a chance to go deeper into that, not just here, but in here. And I do feel stronger than ever before. And I wouldn't have felt that way. Again, not flesh generated, but completely uh, through Christ's help and just being dependent on him. This is the strongest I've ever felt. And the scriptures have come to life as a result. So wanted to encourage you to not give up, to not resist. When you feel like Satan's arrows are coming at you, and maybe you feel like you've gotten hit by some of them. Maybe you feel bit by him. I know it's a paradox, but that's essentially the Christian life. It is a paradox. Paul's letters, his themes, all paradoxes. And just to delight in your weakness, knowing that it's supposed to position you for such a time as this to be vertically reliant upon the Lord and just trust him. You know, Don't pressure yourself trying to figure out why things are happening. That's, you know, that's a very worldly, you know, that's the secular mindset. Be glad that you don't have to figure it out and be glad that, you know, in time, God will reveal to you those whys. He cares about them. But in the meantime, just be there and be present and be still. Uh, one more thing I'll say, um, it goes back to one of my favorite movies, Goodwill Hunting, that iconic scene with Matt Damon and Robin Williams benchside having that very deep existential conversation. And, you know, for some of you may not know, I've been doing EMDR therapy the last year and a half. And one of the big takeaways for me in that process, in that healing with the Refuge Center, uh, how to calm the mind down in crisis. You know, for me, my synapses, you know, I was constantly doing this for so many years, just scanning for danger. That part of my mind was like on steroids, like, when's the ass going to fall in? And eventually it would, and I would just go in this kind of tailspin. I would self-sabotage almost. And now it's like through, again, God's help in that process, in and outside of the MDR, really, it's just I'm not scanning for danger anymore. Because again, it's like, I know that there's a better way to scan. There's a better way to almost like settle the mind down. It's like, how do I invite God into the stillness? We talk about stillness. We talk about quiet times. But when things are going out of control and you feel like nothing's going right, how do we invite God into the bench side with us by the pond? Just having that a very cool conversation. In the matter of seconds, you're making that choice. And that's what's been working even prior to this. I didn't want to lose sight of sharing that with you as well. That's been helpful context for me. So um, I think that's a key for you guys as well. Like how, again, when things seem like they're falling apart around you, what is your way to tap into God and invite him into your midst, into your present and having just allowing him to minister and speak to your heart. Is there a, do you have a recipe for that? Do you have a blueprint for that? If so, I challenge you to discover that and invite him into that process of discovery with you. It's been working for me. Everything that's happened this year, I mean, that's really how I've been able to do it and put it together. So, and I'm blessed that I can go into work. I can still go into work every day and help people not as a distraction, but as a way to shine and not conceal that light. And I'm not hiding right now. I'm going in just knowing, like, I don't know what the future holds. I don't know how many days God has appointed Jubilee. I don't. I don't have to know. This is part of the testimony, and that's why I'm sharing this with you. So, all right, guys, you are awesome. Feel free to leave a comment or a like below. But for the most part, I just wanted to make sure that the truth in this heart got out. So thank you for listening. You guys are awesome. Catch you on the fry. Peace.